Welcome back to the Jets franchise rebuild and today we'll be getting through the very first preseason of this rebuild but I would not expect to see a lot of Aaron Rodgers today. In the first episode we saw that we ended that last season and Aaron Rodgers elected to come back for at least one more year but obviously I'm not going to use him a whole lot here in the preseason. Instead I think we're going to see a lot more of rookie quarterback Jordan Travis and we do have an upgrade point for him. Let's go ahead and use that on field general try to get him a little bit more accurate going into the preseason here. He gets three upgrade points, one to awareness, one to throw accuracy mid, and one to throw accuracy short. And you can obviously see that I signed a quarterback off screen here, and that is Andy Dalton because of the mentor player tag. I really thought Aaron Rodgers would have that tag, but I guess not because he has the franchise quarterback and the award winner tag. So just to get that little bit more experience during the preseason, we have signed Andy Dalton. And I only brought in one wide receiver that was an undrafted free agent, and that is wide receiver Xavier Weaver out of Colorado, a 66 overall. Now, I did sign a new backup tight end. Obviously, we used our first round pick at eight overall to select tight end Brock Bowers, but I did sign Taysom Hill. One, he can be a pretty solid tight end in this game, and two, if we start to have some injury issues at quarterback, I guess I could try him over there. Now, I did sign a couple veterans along the offensive line, the first one being John Feliciano. I hope I said your name right. Probably didn't. A 72 overall. And then I signed left tackle Jerron Christian Sr. and moved him over to right tackle. Once again, probably said your name wrong, but just another backup player along the offensive line. The next move I made was signing some veteran guys along the defensive line, like Leonard Floyd at right end, and then at defensive tackle, I brought in Tristan Hill and Perrion Winfrey. I don't know if Winfrey will make the roster. I know my Bisons franchise, he's actually turned into like my best defensive tackle, but I don't think he's going to be able to develop quite like that in this series. And then along the linebackers, I signed Jordan Hicks to be a backup, and then at right outside linebacker, I brought in Bud Dupree and Jalen Smith. I did sign at least one more undrafted free agent, and that is free safety Jalen Catalan out of Texas, a 66 overall. And then at strong safety, I signed Byron Jones, who was a corner. I moved him over to safety where he's an 80 overall because I really wasn't comfortable going into the season with Tony Adams, a 74 overall as our starter. Before we really get into the preseason here, we do have a few upgrades like defensive back Sauce Gardner, who gets plus one to awareness, chain of direction, man coverage, press, and two to tackle. Next up is defensive tackle Quinnen Williams, who gets plus three to his power moves. Then we have the guy I'm hoping to be our superstar receiver this year in Garrett Wilson. He gets plus four to catch in traffic, one to catching, one to juke move, medium route, short route, spectacular catch, and three to spin move. Now, finally moving on to some of the rookies like tight end Brock Bowers, who gets plus one to awareness, catching, pass block, run block power, two to short route, and one to stiff arm. Then we have backup running back Blake Corum, who was a fourth round pick. He gets plus one to acceleration, awareness, ball carrier vision, and one to change of direction. We also have our running back, Brees Hall, wanting to mentor running back Blake Corum. We're going to say long-term development. I don't think immediate impacts are really going to help us too much. And does he get anything for that? It does not look like it. So I don't really know what the point of that scenario is. Probably should have read it, but it's whatever. Now, Aaron Rodgers might get one drive this preseason, maybe in like the third preseason game, just to see what the offense can really do with him but mostly we will be looking at Jordan Travis. We'll also watch a little bit of Gardner Minshew. Now, the way I'm going to handle the preseason is we will get through all of it in this episode, but I really don't know how much of each game I'm going to be watching. I really want to focus on the offense. We'll watch more of the defense once we get into the regular season, but this is just really seeing how well our rookies can play. Well, Philadelphia would get the ball first and miss a field goal. So now we take over at the 49. It's an end around to the outside, and that'll be about a nine yard gain from Curtis Samuel. From the Eagles, 42. We take the snap. We give it to Brees Hall to the outside. He's got the first down and more brought down to the Eagles, 33-yard line for another nine-yard run. I really don't know how much I'm going to keep all of the other starters in in this game, but Brees Hall down the sideline has a first down, forced out of the 15, and now Josh Sweat is injured for Philadelphia. But I imagine guys like Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall, and Curtis Samuel won't get a ton of playing time. But now from the 15, Travis will drop back to pass. Jordan Travis going downfield and missing an open Brock Bowers. Still at the 15-yard line. Travis will once again drop back to pass. He's going to roll out to the outside. He throws on the run downfield. He finds his man. That's an eight-yard gain to set up a third and two. From the seven-yard line, he'll drop back to pass. A quick throw caught by Lazard, who holds on through contact. First and goal, Jets. Now we come out in a goal line set. Brees Hall is still lined up at running back. It's a toss to the outside. Taysom Hill throws the block, and Brees Hall is into the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. All right, we saw what Brees Hall could do. I've already pulled him from the game, so now Blake Corum is lined up at running back. As we start the next drive of the 25-yard line, tied up at 7. Handoff to Corum, who tries to go to the outside and is brought down for just a 2-yard carry. 
Now a second and eight. Jordan Travis lines up under center. From the 27-yard line, he'll drop back to the pass. A quick throw to the outside is going to be caught, and I think they ruled that complete, but it sets up a third and seven. They did rule it a catch. That was Brendan Rice for a one-yard gain. Now on third down. Jordan Travis in shotgun will drop back to the pass, looking to convert through the air. Going over the middle, and he finds his man, but Garrett Wilson can't hold on through contact. The Eagles would punt the ball away on their next drive. Now a first and 10 at the 40-yard line. He lines up under center. We give it to Blake Corum, who goes to the outside, and he will get met and brought down for a five-yard gain. Why is someone on Philadelphia wearing number 20? I really wish Madden would recognize retired numbers, but now on second and five, it's a handoff to Corum again, and he has a first down run this time into Philadelphia territory. Reminder, now that we're in the second quarter, the Eagles have all of their backups in as well. From the 48-yard line, handoff to Corum to the outside, and he has some pretty solid blocking and ends up with an eight-yard run. Is there also someone wearing number five on the Eagles defense? That is two retired numbers on one team right now, second and two. At the 40-yard line, Travis is lined up under center. Hand off to Blake Corum, and he will cut back inside, have the first down, and get brought down to the 37, but now C.J. Uzama is injured. A couple more runs from Blake Corum, and it's now a third and seven. At the Eagles 34, Travis will take the snap. He runs the play action. He's going deep over the middle. He has his man, and that is the rookie receiver, Brendan Rice, into the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. The son of Jerry Rice getting his first NFL touchdown here in the preseason. And it was a pretty impressive one as he threw off an Eagles defender. And we're just now going to go ahead and jump to the end of this game where we get the win 28 to 16. I actually left Jordan Travis in this entire game to try to get him as much experience as possible. But we get it here with a win and start 1 and 0 here in the preseason. Final stats for Jordan Travis, he goes 16 for 21, 151 yards and two scores. Jalen Hurts threw a touchdown. Apparently their new backup quarterback is Spencer Rattler, who threw no touchdowns and one interception. On the ground, Blake Corum did run for 100 yards. Kenneth Gainwell got a touchdown. Looks like Michael Carter got a touchdown along with Brees Hall, which is one we saw. And then receiving Brendan Rice, six for 69 and a touchdown. And Xavier Gibson got a touchdown as well. Now, before we jump into the second game here of the preseason, we do have a mentor rookie thing again, so let's see if that gives us anything different. Well, I had no idea this was the outcome of that scenario. I've never seen that scenario before, but it's given Blake Corum now a superstar dev trait. So there is now a chance that Corum is going to get a lot more playing time this season than I originally anticipated. Hall is still a really good running back with a star dev trait. But if I can get Quorum to be even better than him, I feel like I have to try it. Not that Quorum is going to be like the number one running back or anything. Brees Hall is still going to be the starter going into the season. But I think I'm going to be trying to split carries a lot more than I thought. We get the ball to start today and I am going to start Blake Quorum today. But Travis is going to start with a play action now throwing downfield. And he's got Brock Bowers for an 11-yard gain. Obviously, we are hoping to see a lot of Bowers this season. First and 10 at the 36-yard line now. He'll take the snap and they give it to Corum. Blake Corum goes up the middle and he's got a four yard run. Now Jordan Travis comes back in shotgun again from the 40 yard line. He'll take the snap and looks a pass. He throws to the outside. That one's caught by Brendan Rice. He's got the first down to the 47. A couple run plays later, it is a third and five. Brees Hall is checked into the game. Travis will look to throw out of shotgun though. And he's gonna lob this one deep downfield. Does he have a man? And that one will be incomplete intended for Curtis Samuel. The defense would then force a three and out, so we take over at our own 43-yard line following a punt. Travis out of a pistol set will throw this one to the outside. That one's caught by Garrett Wilson. That's just a two-yard gain. Now a second and eight from the 45-yard line. Blake Corum is back in the game here at running back, and we will give it to Corum, and he will cut up the middle truck over one man and end up close to the marker. They rule it third and inches. I'm not going to lie, I thought he got the first down, but now Jordan Travis back in shotgun will take the snap and they give it to Corum again. This time he does have the first down pretty easily all the way to the Buccaneers 36 yard line. A new set of downs. Travis is now lining up under center. He'll take the snap and give it back to Blake Corum. We're giving the ball to him a lot today and this time he'll end up with an eight yard carry. Now a second and two. At the 28 yard line, Jordan Travis will drop back to pass. A quick throw to the outside is caught along the sideline. It is Curtis Samuel for the first down. A five-yard pass to Brees Hall on the next play brings up a second and five. Now we come out in an I formation, and we'll fake it to, I believe, Blake Corum. Now he throws downfield, and he finds Curtis Samuel for yet another Jets first down. Now a first and ten from the 12-yard line. Jordan Travis is back in shotgun again. 
He will take the snap and look to pass. He's throwing this one to the end zone. He finds his man, and that is a touchdown to Garrett Wilson. We are going to jump a little bit later into the half now. It is a third and seven from the 24-yard line of the Buccaneers. Travis is back in shotgun. He'll run the play action. Now throw over the middle and over throws a wide open Brendan Rice. Now we jump ahead to the end of this game and the final score was 17 to zero. I did let Gardner Minshew play the entire second half, but I did not jump in and watch any of it. He did manage to lead at least one touchdown drive. And honestly, I don't know if Minshew was even gonna make the team because I kind of like having that mentor player tag with Andy Dalton, but we'll find out after the next preseason game exactly what we're gonna do with that. Jordan Travis today goes 13 for 20, 122 yards and a score. We should have seen a second touchdown, but he just missed Brendan Rice. Gardner Minshew did manage to throw a touchdown, and their quarterback situation does not look that good. Running the ball, Blake Corum ran 27 times for 117 yards, receiving Garrett Wilson 5 for 55 and a touchdown. What happened to Brendan Rice? 3 for 37, and then Xavier Gibson caught the touchdown pass from Gardner Minshew. Following that game, Blake Corum does have an upgrade here, and he gets plus 2 to his awareness and carrying. And following the weekly training before the final preseason game here, we do have an upgrade point for tight end Brock Bowers. We're going to upgrade his vertical threat. He's going to go to an 80 overall, and if he gets an ability slot here, we know he's at least a superstar, and he does get one. He also gets plus two to awareness, one to break tackle, one to deep route, medium route, run block finesse, and short route running, along with two to run blocking. Now, I did say in the beginning of this video, on the final preseason game, we will let Aaron Rodgers play one full drive, and that's exactly what I'm going to do with all of the guys that are projected starters. That means Garrett Wilson, Curtis Samuel, Brendan Rice. I'm pretty sure I'm going to start Rice over Lazard just because I want to see him get a little bit more playing time, but let's see how Aaron Rodgers does with this offense. The defense does allow a touchdown in the Saints opening drive, but now the Jets offense will take the field. Aaron Rodgers from shotgun will drop back to pass. His first throw is a missed throw, I believe intended for Brock Bowers. All right, it might take some time for those two to get on the same page now. Second and 10 from the 25 yard line. We'll hand this one to Brees Hall, who goes up the middle and Hall will set up about a third and two now. And Brian Brisset is injured for the Saints. And that's another player. If I said his name wrong, I do apologize. Third and two. From the 33-yard line, Rodgers lines up under center. We'll take the step and we give it to Brees Hall. He'll go up the middle and get the first down to keep the drive moving. A three-yard carry from Brees Hall in the next play brings up a second and seven. Now from the 39-yard line, Rodgers will drop back. A quick throw to the outside and another overthrow. That one was intended for Curtis Samuel. Now a third and seven, trying to keep the drive alive here. From our own 39, Rodgers will drop back to pass. He's going to roll to the outside. Now looking to go downfield under a lot of pressure and finally will just throw this one away. He starts today 0 of 3. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and give the veteran one more drive here. At the end of the first quarter, we are still down 7 nothing. We get to start at our own 8-yard line. Hand off to Brees Hall up the middle, who will break one tackle and end up with a 2-yard carry. Now a second and 8. Rodgers lines up under center from his own 10-yard line. And we'll go back to Brees Hall. Hall up the middle will fight his way forward and set up a third in inches for the Jets offense. That should take us to the end of the first quarter. We start this next quarter in an eye formation on third in inches from our own 17-yard line. Taysom Mills lined up at fullback. We give it to Brees Hall. He will get the first down, and this drive will stay alive. I was really hoping we could see our veteran quarterback actually complete a pass in the first quarter, but it did not happen. Now first and 10, we go back to Brees Hall. He's got another first down run, this one all the way to the 36-yard line. A one-yard run from Brees Hall in the next play brings up a second and nine now. Rodgers will look to pass. He's going to fire this one over the middle, and he finds Garrett Wilson for the first down into Saints territory, his first completed pass of the season. That 24-yard play sets us up at the Saints' 39-yard line. Now we come out in an eye formation, and we give it to Brees Hall. And Brees Hall has another solid run, this one a gain of 9 yards. Rodgers will now line up under center. From the 29-yard line, Brees Hall is still the running back. And we go back to Hall. Never mind, it's a play action. Now Rodgers throws on the run, and he will find Garrett Wilson all the way down inside this 10-yard line. First and goal, Jets. Now Rodgers comes out with a 5-wide set. He will take the snap, a quick throw. That's going to be incomplete intended, that one for Brendan Rice. That brings up a second and goal. Now Taysom Hill is lined up in the backfield with Brees Hall. It'll be a toss to the outside to Brees Hall. He gets to the edge and will fight and get brought down for no gain. And now Brock Bowers is injured. Hopefully our first round pick is not that hurt. Third and goal now from the eight yard line. Rodgers will drop back to pass. He throws underneath, caught by Brees Hall, and that's going to set up a fourth and goal. 
where we will just send out Cameron Dicker and settle for a field goal here. And it's going to be a fake. And Gardner Minshew keeps it himself and gets brought down. So that's a turnover on downs. I don't know what we were trying to do there, but it clearly was not a great idea. And Aaron Rodgers' day is officially done. Jordan Travis now checks into the game here at their own 24-yard line. Hand up to Brees Hall to the outside. The blocking sets up, and Brees Hall with a huge run jukes out of man across the 50 and finally brought down to the 41-yard line. A thrown away ball on a first down now leads to a second and 10. Back in shotgun. Travis will look for a screen to the outside. Caught by Hall. He gets the block he needs and will fight for the first down to about the 30-yard line. That leads to a second and 10 now from the 30-yard line. Travis back in shotgun will drop back to pass. He throws this one to the outside. Caught by Brees Hall who's got the first down. Apparently this offense is going to be all Brees Hall today. An incomplete pass on first down leads to second and 10. Jordan Travis is back in shotgun again. Brees Hall is still the running back. He'll take the snap and looks a pass. He's firing this one to the end zone and has his man. That is a touchdown, and I believe that is uh, Curtis Samuel. Okay, I thought it was Brendan Rice for a second, but I'll take the touchdown either way. We are going to go ahead and jump much later into this game now. Into the fourth quarter, we are up by four. It is a third and six from the 10-yard line. Travis out of a five wide set, will look to pass. He steps up and Jordan Travis will run for the first down. He fumbles the ball and the Saints have recovered and that will be ruled a safety. Okay, no, it's ruled a touchback. I don't know why it says safety on the top of the screen. And I know we haven't watched really any defense in this episode, but how about a third and 12 at our R31? Marcus Mariota is in at quarterback for New Orleans. He's going to roll to the outside. He's going to try to take off. Never mind, he throws it away, even though he had a clear lane to the first down. That's some great EA logic. And they will settle for a field goal try here to try to make it a one-point game with about 3.20 to play. The snap, the hold, the kick is away, and this one will be good. On the Jets' following drive, we have hit the two-minute warning. It is now a third and two from our own 33. He'll take the snap. It's a handoff up the middle, and that is going to be, I believe, Michael Carter for the first down. Breaking tackles. Alan Lazard is injured, which does stop the clock. And that injury timeout is massive because now the Saints have a chance to get the ball back. It's a handoff up the middle, and he'll be brought down for a four-yard play. They burn their first timeout. Now a second and six. Blake Corum is still the running back here. Travis will take the snap. They give it to Corum, who goes to the outside, and he sets up a third and one. They burn their second timeout. Now Taysom Hill is lined up in the backfield from the 47-yard line. Looks like Jordan Hicks is lined up at tight end, apparently. We send Hill in motion. It's a fake to Corum. Travis with a throw to the outside, and that one will be incomplete. It's a fourth and one, and they have a timeout. But how about this? Our punter, Tommy Townsend, just down them at the one-yard line to start this potential game-winning drive. Can the defense come up with a big play, just get a safety, and get us out of here with a win? Out of a shotgun formation, Mariota with a quick throw will fall incomplete. Now a second and 10. Mariota back in shotgun. A minute 33 to play. He'll take the snap. He steps up in the pocket, throws it underneath, and that is just straight up dropped by their backup running back. That sets up a third and 10 now from inside the one-yard line. Mariota lines up under center. He'll drop back to the pass one more time. He's going to throw this one to the outside. That is caught, but he's brought down short of the marker. It's a fourth and two, and they're forced to burn their final timeout due to an injury. This could be the game here on a fourth and two from the eight-yard line. Mariota takes the snap. It's a handoff to the running back, and he gets to the outside for the first down and is finally brought down to the 20-yard line. Their hopes remain alive. They are now running a no-huddle offense. Mariota back in shotgun with a minute five to play. He'll take the snap and look to pass. He's going deep downfield. He's got a man open, and that is Michael Thomas who has snuck back into the game. I cannot believe they let Michael Thomas come back in. I don't know who that is lined up at receiver there on the top of the screen at the start of this play, but he finds his running back downfield. That's another 10-yard gain and another first down. Are they going to get into field goal range here? About 40 seconds to play. Mariota out of shotgun will drop back to pass again. He steps up in the pocket, throws on the run, and that's a big man with the catch all the way down to the 20-yard line. Are you kidding me, defense? How in the world do we let that man open downfield and he comes up with a catch now inside the 20-yard line? They just have to run down the clock and take a game-winning field goal. That's a handoff to Williams to the outside, and he'll get brought down for a four-yard play. We would burn our timeout to ice the kicker with six seconds to go. This is for the win. The kick is away, and this one will be good. Barring a miracle, we are not going to go undefeated in the preseason. We would need a major kick return here. The kick is away. 
Will we take a touchback? No, we won't. They bring it up from the two-yard line. And he's going to get met and just slammed down to the 20-yard line. We will finish the preseason at 2-1. and one. And to be completely honest, Aaron Rodgers did not look that good in today's game. Jordan Travis looked good through most of the preseason. I was actually pretty impressed with him. He is going to be our backup quarterback. I don't believe Gardner Minshew is going to make the final 53-man roster. Here are all of your final stats for today. I did let Gardner Minshew play a little bit there in the fourth quarter. It doesn't really matter. Jordan Travis goes 12 of 21 for 145. Two touchdowns. Did throw two interceptions in simulation, though. On the ground, Brees Hall ran for 134 yards. Kamar ran for 25 yards in a touchdown. Receiving Brees Hall, 5 of 51. Chris Olave, 5 of 75. And then let's see who caught the touchdowns. That would be Brendan Rice and Curtis Samuel. So it looks like Rice caught one in simulation, at least. We do have one injury following that game. It is not Brock Bowers, though. Alan Lazard has a pulled groin and will miss the first few weeks of the season. But now I have to make some roster moves. I need to get rid of 16 players to get out of the final 53. And I already know the first move we are making. Gardner Minshew will save $2.1 million in cap space. I like having Andy Dalton because of the mentor player tag to get Travis a little bit more experience. So Gardner Minshew, you're going to hit free agency. The next one up is running back JV and Hawkins. I have no idea who you are. You're a 68 overall. You are no longer on this team. Now at wide receiver, we have a few moves to make. Wide receiver Lance McCutcheon is going to go over to the practice squad. And then wide receiver Malik Taylor is just going to get released. We're also going to make one more move, and that is wide receiver Jason Brownlee. At 86 speed, I really don't see you helping out this team that much. Over at defensive end, Marquis Spencer or Mark West Spencer. I'm not real sure how to say your name. Either way, you were not going to be a member of this team. And I am going to be cutting defensive tackle Jalen Holmes. I know Perry on Winfrey is a bit lower rated, but Holmes is already 28. Winfrey is only 24. There is still a chance I can develop Perry on Winfrey. And then at left outside linebacker, which really is not a position of strength on this team, we are going to cut Chaz Surratt. Sherwood's a little bit younger and has a little bit better rating, so Surratt, you are not going to make this team. Now, there are a few moves here at corner we are going to make, and we're going to start down here at Kalen Barnes. You're going to go over to the practice squad. Can anyone else go to the practice squad? Jarek Bernard Converse, you're going to go over there as well. I believe that puts seven active defensive backs or corners on our roster in general. We are also going to go and cut corner Tay Hayes. And then safety Trey Dean is going to get moved over to the practice squad, and we still have four moves left to make. We're going to circle back over to corner here. Craig James does have 88 speed and 70 man coverage, but Brandon Eccles only has 64 man coverage. So I think we're going to make the move and cut Eccles. We are going to go ahead and cut at least one tight end, and that is going to be tight end Jeremy Ruckert. I know he's 24 years old, but I think Taysom Hill is a much better fullback than Ruckert, so we can use Taysom Hill a little bit more this season. We still have two moves here we have to make, and I think I'm going to try to trade Israel Abanaconda just because I believe at a 21-year-old 70 overall running back, someone would be willing to give us something for him. And the only offer we have gotten for him is from Buffalo for Dorian Williams and a sixth round pick. Let me see if I can try to work with that. Instead of a player and a sixth round pick, we end up getting a fourth round pick. Yes, it's a trade in division, but I really don't feel like we were going to use him at all. And the final move to get down to the 53-man roster is going to be defensive end Michael Clemens. So finally, in the next episode, we will get to our first regular season game of the series and kickoff this year that is a Super Bowl or bust for Aaron Rodgers.